vibe welcome to hddc hd designs crochet i'm heather and i'm 30 from united kingdom and this channel of mine is where i share everything crochet with you now today i'm bringing back a little something to the channel so for all of you who have watched the podcast from the beginning thank you so so much I used to do a little feature called HDDC Hot Right Now, and I'm bringing it back, y'all. Um, within HDDC Hot Right Now, I did a little um, summary, a little lowdown of the latest crochet patterns, the latest knitting patterns that had been released like that month, as well as what I'd been reading and listening to and watching when I have been making. And so I decided I'm going to bring that back to the channel. Um, I love watching the sew down um, on the fold lines. That's really similar. They bring, they show you the latest sewing patterns. Um, and I love it because it keeps me up to date. It keeps me current. And I like to see what is being put out there. So I want to do the same again with the Yarny World. Now... I am snuggled up in my blanket because it's actually close to 10 o'clock at night but I want to get this video out for you so here I am. This is a crochet blanket that I made for my granddad when he was in a care home and when he passed away it came back to me and I just needed a little bit of snug tonight so I'm wrapped up in all of this bright crochet goodness. Um, there are various videos where I have shown you these blankets and I'll link some so you can go back and watch them and we are going to jump in. So let's jump into this. First I've got a few shout outs. Um, so if you are a brand new viewer, hey, hello, welcome to the tribe. So good to have you here and I hope you have a good time and that you've got a project with you. If you are returning, hey try, what's good, what's happening? I'm so glad you're all here. And I hope you all really enjoy this feature that I'm bringing. And then also a massive shout out to my tribe stars. Thank you so much to you wonderful people for pledging and supporting HDDC on Patreon. I cannot thank you enough. The money that you have pledged is paying for the tech editing on some of the patterns I've been working on and the Tribe Stars receive a weekly post every weekend with sneak peeks of what I am working on. So all the projects that I've designed and I'm working on that are hidden away, you've all seen. And I can't thank you enough for your input, for your courage, for your encouragement. I feel like you're my own little cheerleaders so thank you so so much right let's jump into this i have made notes on my mac and i've got it here i'm going to refer to it i'm all set up and ready put so much research into this okay so we're going to go straight in with pattern releases i love to follow the trends on instagram i also love to look at the latest releases on Ravelry and so I had to bring you some of the latest releases. Now the ones I've got were either February or January 2020 but they are brand new and they are hot. So the first one that we are going to talk about is the Copenhagen cardigan and I'm putting images on the screen for you right now. It's by Tatiana and again as ever what all YouTubers say. If I'm butchering your name, I'm so, so sorry, but I'm trying. Hope I've got it right. Tatsiana has um, designed this, and this pattern uses four ply yarn. It's a 3.5 mil hook, and the pattern comes in sizes small to 3XL, which is great, um, and the pattern's available in English and Dutch. Now I really like this pattern because it's got a cable and then like an open lace work design down the front which really, it just makes me think of Aran knitting and I'm all about that. And I like that this is actually a crochet design. 
it doesn't look bulky which sometimes crochet items can look bulky this is quite um it looks quite light it looks warm and it looks like it lays quite flat so i also like that and then interestingly it's worked seamlessly top down so i i'm quite intrigued to try this one just because of the construction method and then you can also um, do the full length sleeve or the short sleeve. And that's available on Ravelry, as are all of these designs. I couldn't work out how to check on Etsy if it was like a latest release. So for now, I'm just sticking to Ravelry. And then the second crochet pattern I'm bringing to you, it's not wearable and it's not my usual bag. It's amigurumi and it's not something that I normally would make, but it's Tiana, the Disney princess, my favourite Disney princess. I have so many Tiana dolls, one of which is just here. I also have Prince Naveen. Oh. Tiana is a frog. And I'm sure you've seen some of my Tiana artwork in the background of some of my vlogs as well. Tiana is my favourite Disney princess. Favourite, favourite, favourite. Um, and so when I saw this, I had to bring it to the podcast. Had to. This is hot right now. Um, it's by, I think it's Kyra. Kyra Cremon. And it uses five ply or sport weight yarn. And if you check her listing, she's got loads of other listings for other princesses so if you have a favorite if you go and check she might have it on there um i am tempted to make one i know i won't end up making one uh, but i do think it's so so cute and i had to share this design and also just the talent that's gone into it it really resembles tiana and i'm just really taken with it um and then Moving on to knitted patterns, I've selected two. Interestingly, there seem to be a lot less crochet releases than there are knitted releases. Um, I could have listed like tens, tens of hundreds of knitted patterns, but only like maybe 10 crochet patterns, which is crazy. Um, so hopefully we'll start to see more and more crochet patterns come through. But then again, also, some of the patterns, a lot of patterns are published in magazines and the magazines would have the rights so they won't come through for like, is it six months or a year? So maybe if I buy um, particular magazines I'd be able to show you more crochet patterns. But for now I'm sticking to Ravelry. So the first knitted pattern that I'm bringing to you is the Sarah and it's published in Coco Knits by Coco Knits. Um, so this uses double knit yarn which is 8 ply and it uses a half fisherman rib and it's a heavy cardigan slash light jacket um, and it's a perfect piece for transi transitioning between winter to spring and then maybe um, autumn to winter because you could wear it as a layered piece and then an umbrella if it's raining or like just a light rain mac. Uh, and it looks really snuggly and I think I would definitely benefit from having one of these to wear in the office because I'm usually quite cold when I'm in the office um, and I also just like that it's a real pop of colour so here they've used a mustard and I could see me pulling that off but it would also look like it would really go with my work uniform in like a grey or a black though knitting in black we you know what that's like um, so this cardigan is really on trend as well, it's something that you would find on the high street and it's really quite modern. So I definitely think a lot of us could make play space for that in our wardrobes. So that's the Sarah, it just, it's just called Sarah but I feel like it's a Sarah cardigan slash jacket. Um, and then the next knitting pattern I'll bring into you is called Mountains and I think her name is Emile. Lewis, she's French, um, I'm not quite sure of the pronunciation, 
and this was published February 2020, it's this month, brand new, and it's a lightweight but warm cardigan, and it's got this really cool cable design down the sleeves, and they actually use um, a strand of DK and lace mohair held together, but it does state in the description that you could sub that out for Aran or worsted weight, which is great because I've got quite a bit of that in my stash. Um, and this pattern's available in English and French. And in the description, it stated that it was a really good cardigan to go for a walk in the countryside in or in the mountains, that it's really lightweight but warm. And I think, again, I could really fit that into my wardrobe. I'd wear it with um, a quiet like to see like a patterned, quite floaty skirt, um, maybe an A-line skirt with then either tights and boots or socks and like converse, low, low, low top converse um, with like a, a nice fitted cardigan. So I think that's how I would wear that. But then the model here is wearing it with jeans and that looks really good. I'm just not a jeans person. Um, and again, the colour combos that you could make. I think you'd go quite light because otherwise the cable detail would be lost. Um, so I'd probably go for quite a neutral beige. But you could do this in quite a bright colour, like a bright pink or a bright mustard, and it would carry it really well. And it would look good with jeans as well. So that's the Mountains card again. Now I think all four of those p patterns are pretty cool. So comment below which one's your favourite and then also if you are aware of any patterns that have just been released if you could put those below as well so that I can check them out and the tribe can check them out and we can have a good little discussion down below that would be amazing. Um, so I am going to go on through to what I am reading to keep me company. So when I'm knitting or crocheting I can read as well if I have my Kindle. Um, and then also, I spend quite a bit of time on public transport, um, getting to and from work, so I like to have a book. And quite often I'll read before bed as well, just to decompress my mind. So I thought I would discuss three books that I've read this month, um, three that have really stood out for me. So far this month I have read 14 books, slightly bragging there. It will slow down, I know it will, but I'm really proud of that. Um, and that has purely just been from, I'd say, 80% from being on the bus for an hour and 40 minutes a day. Um, then I've got, I spend a bit of time on my lunch break and then if I have a bath, I will read in the bath. So plenty of reading time has been going on. And I like to read all different types of books and I always love to receive recommendations, suggestions and reviews. So the first book this month that I am recommending to you is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Now this is book seven, volume seven in Harry Potter's Adventure and Life. Um, and the reason I chose to reread this was because my friend said that it had been 10 years since it had been published. But then when I checked online, it was actually published in 2007. So it's over 10 years, because that would have been 2017. But when I realised it had been so long, and then I realised that I'd only read it once, I knew I wanted to reread it. Now, I'm not the type of girl to read a series from book one to book seven all the way through. Um, I will read a book in a series, and then I'll go off and read some other books elsewhere and then I'll come back and read the next one in the series. I think maybe once I've read like bum 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 and for me I find that the story really merges together. I lose where I am in the series and I just don't enjoy it as much. Um, and so a little bit like my whips I like to flip from different books just like I do with my whips until they're done. I'm so glad I picked this one up again. Um, I have tried a few times to start with book one and work my way through to the end but I've never got to the end again so this time I decided I'm going to start with the end 
and work backwards. So at some point I will pick up book six, The Half Blood Prince, and reread it. Now, I recall this book being really heavy going and quite depressing because there wasn't so much the magic, but it was the escaping from you know who, and then also the loneliness of them being on their own and um, the author really had to portray how difficult it was for them. So it, was, it felt a little bit heavy um, and so it always put me off reading it again. But in actual fact rereading it, um, although it is a little bit heavy, I really enjoyed it because it is so different from the films, so different. Um, there's so much more information in here and backstories to some of the characters and it really ties so many different elements together to finish the story. Um, for example, Creature, the house elf of the Black family, we hear about how brave he's been and some of the heartache that he's been through and you really do have a whole lot more compassion for him. Um, especially hearing about Master Regulus Black's death and then knowing that Creature comes to fight in the Hogwarts battle at the end. And none of that's in the book, it's, um, in the film, it's such a shame. So yeah, I really enjoyed this. It's quite hefty, it's 600 odd pages long, but it's definitely one to reread. Um, and it was just really nice to read the bit the 19 years later when they've got their own kids. <clears throat> Excuse me. And also it touches upon the battle with Grindelwald, a little bit of Dumbledore's past with his sister. And I feel like you need to refresh your mind on that so that you can really enjoy the Fantastic Beast films. So that was one book I've devoured this month. Another book that I have leapt into is... Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert and it's Creative Living Beyond Fear. This is a book that I've already read but I decided to reread it. Um, this book is great for reframing your mind for creatives. I think when you're a creative um, it certainly seems that you can also struggle with mental health quite strongly. I'm sure anybody can, but it just seems to be that creatives um, really do seem to struggle. And I think part of that is um, having issues with your self-belief, maybe you've got doubts. Um, and this book really helps you to reframe your mind away from fear over creativity to um, encouraging it and embracing it. Um, enjoying the uncertainty and just really working with it and it was a really good book to pick up and get into again this book was really short I think it's like it's 273 pages I whipped through this really quickly the chapters aren't huge so you could just read from like one heading to another you don't have to read it all in a great big chunk and um, some of what she says, most of what she says to be honest, if not all of it, is really thought provoking and it made me think I'm going to enjoy the process of designing um, crochet patterns and I'm going to embrace the fact that creativity means that ideas change um, and just because it changes it's not a bad thing and just really enjoy the journey that it's taken me on and I know that sounds so cliche but this is a really good book to have a nibble on so definitely jump into that if you can and then another book that I read and this one was on my Kindle um, I read quite a bit of it when crocheting but in actual fact this is one of them books where you stay up really really late to finish it and I stayed up till one in the morning, Just I just had to finish this book. Um, I think I started it on like a Wednesday or a Tuesday and stayed up really late on the Thursday night and had it basically finished for Friday morning. Um, and this book is Heartless by Melissa Mayer. Um, 
it was something like 99p on Amazon to download and I'll put links to all of these down below as well. I'm not linked, I won't get any money for it, it's just so you can find them. Um, this book is the prequel to Alice in Wonderland and it shows you um, the Queen of Hearts story, her backstory. Oh, I was so gripped, I was enthralled. I could not put this book down and I want all of her books. I've read some of her work before but this one was just great. I really, really loved it. It plays straight into Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll and honestly the story, you just, you flip the pages like, no, no, don't do it, she's going to become so heartless and she does. The Queen of Hearts is completely heartless and you learn why. And it's a great, great take. So I would definitely recommend you get that. 99 pence, well, well spent. As soon as I finished it, I messaged my friend like, you have to get this book and read it. So there are some of the books I've been reading. Again, if you have any suggestions of anything you've been reading, please put them below. I am a keen, keen, avid little bookworm. Um, and I'm always looking for new suggestions from anything from self-development to sci-fi to dystopian anything I will give it a go. So drop those below for me. That would be really useful and we can get a little discussion going as well And then the only other thing I've got to bring to you is stuff that I've been listening to so I do find when I'm crocheting I have my favorite YouTube podcast that I will watch then I also really enjoy audio and not having the visual um, input. I think that's because I work in an office and so I'm in front of screens all day. And like now, my eyes are tired and they do feel quite grainy. And so I try to not have too much light from a screen. Um, and it's just nice to just get into the flow of crochet or knitting and just listen. Which is why I love Audible and I'm thinking that I'm just going to sign up to it again and get some books on there. Um, I love listening to stories. So a couple of things I have been listening to are um, podcasts on Spotify and you can get them on other platforms as well such as iTunes and if you Google them they'll come up. Number one is UK True Crime Podcast. Guys. Wow. I do quite enjoy reading a crime book, but I can find sometimes they're so gruesome that I get too in the feels and I freak myself out and I have nightmares and ugh. Um, but I've been listening to the podcast. Um, the narrator is brilliant. He's got quite a dry sense of humour. Some of his comments are like laugh out loud. <laughs> um, he spends quite a lot of time researching the facts from, um, I think he might read the judgments and the court cases in some instances, and then he definitely reads newspaper articles, and then he tells you the story behind the crime, and there's a new episode every Tuesday, and I have binged on this um, podcast. I have almost listened to, I think there's like, say there's 200, I've listened to at least 150, and I only started on them about two weeks ago, um, there are a few that I, I cannot listen to because they're too similar to like my scenario, like walking through the woods and then someone's murdered. I love walking the woods. I can't listen to that. Um, but some of them, the crimes are truly horrific. Most of the ones he covers are solved. Some of them are unsolved. And in all honesty, some of the crimes that you hear I, I will never understand because I don't want the mindset of a criminal, but I do not understand. For example, um, wife decides she doesn't want to be with husband, so her and her new boyfriend hatch a plan to kill the husband so they can start a new life. I mean, what could go wrong? How how possibly could you not get found out and not go to, to prison? I, pff, I just don't know. So I have been binging that. Um, and now I'm at a point now where I'm tuning in every Tuesday to keep up with them. I know there's also a Patreon group as well. And I'm, I am, I think I'm going to sign up to that next month. So every month I sign up to a new Patreon. I've got um, two regular ones and then I try something new every month. 
and so I think that would be the one I try and new next month and just for the month and binge on the patreon only um, true crime podcast because I just can't get enough I just can't get enough and I also like that they're based in the UK because it is the UK judicial system laws and also areas that I'm aware of or that there was a crime in Leicester um, and then a Birmingham and surrounding areas so again that makes it just it makes it very real and then another podcast that I've been binging is the dressed by it's um the history of fashion dressed and this one each little podcast they're about 30 to 40 minutes long some are shorter they really delve into an aspect of um history of apparel basically and like the first one i listened to was the history of glitter and i learned so so much it was really well researched and there were so many facts given so this is one definitely to keep dipping in and out of um i really like the information that i gleaned from listening to this so i do dipping sort of like every other day i will listen to one of the back episodes on there without a doubt and then the last thing to say is youtube so one of my latest discoveries is you got paged and she is a wedding dress designer oh my goodness the thing she makes oh <laughs> i could lust after most of those dresses um i recommend you go and watch her office tour because oh my goodness her office is amazing it's just goals like her she's wallpapered the walls with the pictures of her published um dresses so when they've hit like a magazine or they've done a photo shoot for them she's put that picture on the wall it just looks amazing and it's goals because she's got this thriving huge business and it's all based off her passion and i would love to do something like that with hddc would love to so that's another thing to check out so tribe that is hgdc hot right now this hand has really been going this podcast wow um thank you so much for watching please comment below with any um any patterns you've seen that have been released i didn't mean to do that any patterns that have been released anything you're reading and anything you're watching or listening to i'm gonna go i'm going to take my contact lenses out and i am going to work on my secret project so if you want to hear more about that then become a tribe star on patreon the links below and i will see you in the next video happy making moments and memories <laughs> <laughs>